Assembly of the transducer shield is simple, but requires care to avoid contamination of the sterile field. First, the non-sterile assistant removes the kit and the instructions for use from the box. The instructions for use must be studied to the extent necessary to facilitate proper use of the kit. The sterile practitioner then removes the sterile kit from the pouch and places it on the sterile field. The assistant applies a pea-sized volume of ultrasound gel to the transducer face. Note that either non-sterile or sterile gel may be used between the transducer face and the inside of the sterile shield. The gel volume should cover approximately one-half to two-thirds of the extent of the transducer face. Avoid applying excessive ultrasound gel as this could compromise sterility of the shield. Visually confirm that the protective cap is properly positioned over the needle guide. The assistant lowers the transducer into the bottom half of the transducer shield until it is fully seated. Care must be used to avoid contaminating the practitioner's sterile gloves. The protective cap is removed by the non-sterile assistant using care to avoid touching the sterile bottom shield. The practitioner then slides the top half of the sterile shield down over the transducer and snaps it in place simultaneously in the front and rear of the shield. There should be audible clicks from both the front and the rear snap closures when the two halves lock together. The snap closures at the front and rear of the shield should be checked visually to confirm complete shield closure around the transducer. To install the cable sleeve, the assistant holds the transducer by the cable and lowers it into the cable sleeve being held by the practitioner until it reaches the distal end of the sleeve. At this point, the sterile practitioner grasps the transducer and secures the sterile sleeve to the shield with an elastic band. Gently pull on the sleeve until the elastic band is snug against the flange of the transducer shield assembly. Insertion of the needle into the needle guide is facilitated by resting the magnet on the magnet rail. Place the magnet against the magnet rail to stabilize the needle assembly. Align the needle tip with a needle guide orifice and advance the needle into the guide. As a final check before use, the practitioner passes the needle through the needle guide and observes when the needle tip starts to protrude from the bottom of the transducer shield. At this point, the image of the virtual needle should be seen just entering the very top of the ultrasound field. This step confirms calibration is correct. Depending upon which hand is used to advance the needle during the procedure, it may be necessary to toggle the left-right orientation of the ultrasound image. If the needle is advanced with the left hand, the virtual needle should enter from the left side of the ultrasound image. If the needle is advanced from the right hand, the virtual needle should enter from the right side of the ultrasound image. Consult your ultrasound system's user guide for specific instructions on how to toggle the ultrasound screen. Finally, the practitioner slides the needle slowly forward and backward through the needle guide and observes the virtual needle on the sonogram. The motion of the virtual needle should mirror the motion of the actual needle. The needle is then withdrawn after these tracking verifications and placed in the sterile field until utilized in the following procedure. If any of these system checks fails, the practitioner should stop the procedure and refer to the sterile kit instructions for proper assembly and to the transducer and systems user guide for correct settings. For more information, please visit sonosite.com slash axotrack.